throughout his life, the one thing that meant most to Jesus was people. He sacrificed everything to lead them to his Father and to love them no matter what. Jesus loved everyone. That was what made him so different and so necessary to our lives. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Through many years of ministry, we've discovered that there's no greater joy than loving and caring for God's people. That means you, no matter your denomination, race, or walk of life. Your dreams and desires are important to God, and that makes them important to us. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus to everyone. By building faith in God through the teaching and preaching of His Word, Lakewood helps those who have been overcome to be overcomers. We're interested in God's very best for you. So please, just as you are, join the people of Lakewood for the next hour as we open God's Word together. At Lakewood Church, we're here for you. Well, we welcome you. That is our welcome from Lakewood Church. We are so glad you've tuned in. I'm a pastor, don't is my wife here, and we are here to bless you and to minister the Word of God to you. And we're just so delighted that yes. you choose to watch the program. And everybody said amen. Amen. I want to encourage you that if you don't understand why things happen in life, just trust God anyway, because God knows what's best for us. You say, well, why did God do this and that? And you know, it was, you know, there is a devil. If there's a God, there's a devil. And the devil does the bad things. But in Isaiah, in the 55th chapter, listen to what God says. He says, this plan of mine is not what you would work out. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours. For just as the heavens are as high as the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So now, if your plans don't work out just according to what you think they should, just trust God anyway, yes. because God knows what's best for us, and His thoughts are higher than ours, and His ways are better than our ways. So He'll work it out in a better way so that it'll do you more good. And all the people said, Amen and Amen. Amen, Amen. Give Dodie a hand clap. All right, let's... All make our confession together. Everybody say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible. Indestructible, indestructible. ever-living ever -living. seed, seed of the Word of God. Word of God. I, will I will never be the same. Never, never, never. never, never. I'll never be the same. In, be Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Last of all, verse 10, last of all, I want to remind you that your strength must come from the Lord's mighty power within you. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand safe against all the strategies and tricks of Satan. We are not, for we are not fighting against people made out of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. So use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy when he attacks. And when it's all over, you will still be standing up. Can I have an amen? amen. This is the year of maturity. I believe we're going to grow out of babyhood. We're not. We're going to get off of the bottle. We're going to. We're going to no longer be babes. We're no longer going to be children. We're going to grow up. 
but you will never grow up until you get the Word of God on the inside of you. Now, I'm not a televangelist. I want you to know that. I'm not an evangelist. I am a telepastor. <laughs> Is there any such thing as a telepastor? Anyway, I add to what your pastor gives you, and so it's a pastoral message to help you to grow. But there is more truth in the body of Christ today than ever on the, in the history of the church. Thank God for the Word of God. But you know a lot of people go to church all their life and never know who their enemy is. They think it's their wife, <laughs> or their husband, or their boss, or somebody else. This Bible tells us that we have supernatural enemies. And if we have supernatural enemies, we need supernatural power. Somebody said, well, I tell you, I don't like that talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Well, you may not talk about, like talking about Satan and demon powers and, and dragging people down to hell. Listen, there is a devil and there is a God and there's a baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire that helps us to understand our rights. So here, here is the picture. We are fighting. It says that you may be able. Shout out, I'll, I'll be able. See, that's what it's all about. We want you to be able, to be able to stand safe. And the Bible says, and when it's all over, you'll still be standing. Now, we want to talk about that today. I want to read some out of the Amplified here, too, in Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, when he said he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He led a train of vanquished foes. Now look up here just a minute. When Jesus arose, after he had done mortal combat with the spirit world, he led a train of vanquished foes. Who was that? Even though those are terrible words over there about who our enemy is, thank God he has been conquered, he has been vanquished, and Jesus demonstrated it to the whole universe. Can I have an amen? amen? And then I want to read to you Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. This is a very illuminating scripture, and you need to know, you've got to know these things, people. Not just think about them, but you've got to know them. Now listen to verse uh, 13. You were, and you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. Now look up here just a moment. Our condition... Before we became Christians, we were dead. Not just irreligious and bad, we were dead. The Bible says, And you hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sins. So, so our condition was that we were dead to God, and Jesus came into our heart and gave us eternal life. Could I have an amen? amen. A better amen. amen. So then you were dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, God brought to life together with Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now listen, having canceled and blotted out, I'm going to say that again, now having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note with its legal degrees and demands which was in force and stood against us and hostile to us, this note with its regulations, degrees, and demands, he set aside and completely cleared out of the way by nailing it to his cross. Thank God he cleared it out of the way. Now notice in verse 15, here is, you say, what happened when Jesus died? And, and what happened between the time he rose again? What all, what all happened? Here's what happened. Here's the word of God. Listen to it, Christian. And it doesn't matter what denomination you belong to or don't belong to, you're the part of the body of Christ. So listen, here's what God did for you. God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us. All those wicked spirits and demon forces and satanic powers that we read about in the text, I'll tell you, God disarmed them. I said God disarmed them. When Jesus came out of that grave, he said, I got the keys of death and hell. They, all the devil can do is deceive you, lie to you, and scare you. He disarmed, God disarmed the principalities against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumph over them in the cross. 
Thank God we can know that he conquered Satan for us. You need to know that Satan is somebody you don't have to fight against. You just resist because Jesus has already fought for us. Can I have an amen? amen. Now I want to read something to you out of, the, out of the Living Bible, and it's found in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, and I like the, I, I like the Living Bible on this. Now God has shown us a different way to heaven, not by being good enough and trying to keep his laws. See, a lot of people listening to me, you think if you can live good enough and just keep all the religious rules, you'll go to heaven. No, he said, uh, it's not by being good enough or trying to keep all the laws. But the scripture told us about it long ago. Now God says he will accept and acquit us, declare us not guilty if we believe in his son, Jesus Christ. See, the Bible says in that, I, I, I didn't read it, to put on the whole armor of God. And the first arm, part of the armor is, it lets your loins be girt about with truth. The first play, part of the armor that you ought to put on is wrap yourself in redemption reality and know what Jesus did for you. Now, God says he will declare us not guilty. So many people live under guilt and condemnation. But you know, when you come to Jesus, he declares you not guilty. Not guilty. If we trust Jesus Christ to take away our sins, and we all can be saved in the same way by coming to Christ, no matter who we are or what we have been like. Yes, all of sin, all short of God's glorious ideal, Yet now declares, uh, God declares us not guilty. Everybody shout, not guilty. Not guilty. Say, away, condemnation. Away. Get out of my life, condemnation. God says, I'm not guilty. God says, I'm not guilty. See, God declares us not guilty of offending him. If we trust in Jesus Christ, who in his kindness freely took away our sins, for God sent Christ, now listen to this, for God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to take the punishment for our sins. He suffered for every act of adultery, every act of fornication, every blasphemous word, every person who has offended God in any way. It, John said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away not just the sin of John Osteen and Dodie Osteen and our family, but the sins of the whole world. Think about it. God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins. No wonder he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God forsook him because he became us. To take away all of our sins and to end all God's anger against us. I want you to say, God is not mad at me. He said, well, Brother Osteen, I'm living a bad life. Uh, but I want to tell you, God, if you'll come to Jesus, he declares you're not guilty. He declares you acquitted, and God ain't mad at you. Amen. 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 For God sent Christ to take away the punishment, the punishment for your sins, and to end all God's anger against us, he used Christ's blood in our faith as a means of saving us from his wrath. Thank God that we have a knowledge of redemption truth. We know there is an enemy. We know that the enemy is out to get us and drag us down to hell and to deceive us and lie to us. But we're not babies. We're not children. Suddenly, we have come into the light and we know that that fierce enemy of ours is a defeated foe and God has brought us to him by the blood of Jesus and we have been declared not guilty. Oh, let's rejoice. Not guilty. Come on, clap and shout like you're happy about it. Amen, 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 amen. I, I'm going to read to you. Now, since it's a living Bible, let me just read it to you out of the book of Hebrews. You don't need even to turn that off. It's so short. Long ago, God spoke in many different ways to our fathers, to the prophets, in visions and dreams, even face to face. 
telling them little by little his plans. But now, everybody shout, but now. But now. Thank God for the but gods and the but now. <laughs> Say, but now. but now. See, we're living in a totally different day. They had the types and the shadows and lived in the figures and all of that, but we're in the reality. They look forward to Jesus coming. We look back and know he's already come. He's already been born. He's already demonstrated God's goodness. He's already gone to the cross. He's already taken your sins and your sicknesses and your curse and your death. He's already died the death. He already went down and conquered Satan. He arose and took his blood back to heaven. Hallelujah. We are living on the, on the, in the day when all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord to be saved. That's what the psalmist said. This is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice therein. What day? The day when all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Woo! I got happy. I tell you, this is fire in my bones. And I have such a burning desire as a pastor to feed the people of God and to let you know that your sons and daughters are the most high God. You don't have to crawl through life defeated. You can rise and rule over the devil. Come on, that's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now I'll tell you, we're raising up a generation of young people over here and all through this audience. They know who they are. Thank God they know who they are. They know what to say to their enemy who wants to come and deceive them. Long ago, God spoke in many different ways to our fathers through the prophets and visions, even face to face, telling them a little by little about his plans. See, we have the full revelation of his plan. Paul talks about it. But now, that's where we stopped off a while ago. Everybody shout, but now. but now. But now in these days, he has spoken to us through his son. Jesus is God's last message to the human race. He's spoken to us in his son. Jesus is the alpha and the omega, the A and the Z, the Greek alphabet, alpha and, and, and omega. In other words, there's nothing else you can hear that Jesus doesn't tell you about. He is the complete revelation of God. God has spoken to us through his, through his Son, to whom He has given everything, and through whom He made the worlds and everything there is. Listen, the Lord Jesus made this world, this universe. God's Son shines out with God's glory. And all that God's Son is and does marks Him as God, and He regulates the universe by the mighty power of His command. Listen, you can set your clock a thousand years from now, and this universe will be running on time. Jesus holds it and regulates it by his word of power. Hallelujah. Now listen. He is the one, now notice, the one who made this world and regulates it by his mighty word of power. King of kings and Lord of lords, creator of all things. Listen, he is the one. He is the one who died to cleanse us and to clear our record of all sin and then sat down in the highest honor beside the great God of heaven. Oh my, when you think about who it was born of a virgin Mary, who it was that walked the shores of Galilee, who it was that demonstrated God's goodness and love and mercy and healing and miracles on this earth, when you think about who it was who went to that cross. I'm talking about knowing reality. I'm talking about growing up. I'm talking about not having to run to the preacher for everything. I'm talking about knowing what happened when Jesus died and rose again. He is the one who died for our sins to clear our record. Clear our record. Notice these, these phrases. Not guilty. Everybody shout, not guilty. not guilty. Now, this is what will happen if you would just simply give yourself to Jesus. Listen to these phrases. Everybody shout, not guilty. Not guilty. Acquitted. Acquitted. He, took away our sins. he took away our sins. He cleared my record. He cleared my record. 
My record is clear. And listen, if you have a bad record and you want it cleared, just come to Jesus. Because when you come to Jesus, all he did will put, be put into effect for you. I don't care who's listening, what all you've done, how many bad things you've said, you said, how many immoral things that you've committed, and all of that, all of the things that hang over you. Listen, when you come to Jesus, he will clear your record. Come on, let's shout. Oh my, I got saved when I was 17 years old. 17 years old. I, I, I always considered myself a real bad sinner. I, I know I would have become a gambler if Jesus hadn't saved me because I loved to play marbles for keeps. <laughs> and I had a lot of things in my life I was ashamed of, even at 17. But I'm so glad you will never be able to find out what I did. <laughs> never, 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 never. And all the ugly, dirty words you've ever said and all the ugly, dirty things you've ever done and all the uh, criminal things you've ever done and everything that's in your past and all oh, you're so sorry about. Listen, if you come to Jesus, he'll push his computer button and he'll wipe it out. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my. Thank God he cleared our record. Cleared our record. I'm going to talk more about this tonight, but thank God for what Jesus did. And the Bible says we wrestle against these great e evil princes. The only power they have is to deceive us and lie to us and keep us in ignorance. See, they tremble at the very thought of people listening to what I say. They can remember when Jesus disarmed them, broke their power, shed his blood, and delivered us. Thank God he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And, and I don't have to think I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Thank God I don't have to think I'm not guilty. I know I'm not guilty. His blood has cleansed away my sin and your sin. Now, you can know this. Listen, you can know this in your head. But when you get it in your heart and Satan knocks at your door, you'll open and say, come on in, Satan, i got news for you. I know you're a defeated foe. I know that Jesus has, has defeated you and, and given that victory to me. And I rebuke you and stand against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We learn to be devil chasers. Amen. So we're going to grow up. And oh, I like what Jesus said. I have yet so many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Now, come back tonight, come back Wednesday night, and we're going to get into things that are going to really cause you to stand up strong and defeat the devil and make Jesus the Lord of your life. Now, let's bow our heads in prayer. Nobody leaving. You know, this is one of the happiest times of my life when I get to walk over here to this camera and talk heart to heart to you. Because you see, we'll reach more people by television in one year than we could reach in a lifetime here in this church. And we're so glad for this medium. And we've been talking about what Jesus has done. Wouldn't you like to have your record cleared, be declared not guilty, have everything wiped away, just have everything cleared away to where you're not guilty of anything? Well, if you'll come to Jesus and make him the Lord of your life, you will be enjoy what I've been talking about today. God will say, Jesus is your Lord. You're not guilty. I clear your record, and all your past will be gone, and you'll be born again. Now, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord Jesus. I say this so often at the closing, but it's, it's true. All you have to do is call. Now, I want you to pray this prayer with me, and pray it with sincerity but with joy. So, God, I know I'm a sinner. I'm glad to admit I'm a sinner. God, you say I'm a sinner. I agree with you. I am a sinner, and I need to be saved. But I'm so glad to hear about your love through Jesus Christ. And Jesus, I'm so glad you've conquered the devil for me, and you put away my sins. I ask you, Jesus, right now, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior, and I'll never be ashamed of you. 
Now, because you are my Lord and Savior, my record is clear. And I'll never live under condemnation again because I'm saved and born again, and Jesus is my Lord.